All right, stats, welcome to a little video for your chapter 12 mega. Again, this is chapter 12 here. Chapter 12 mega homework set worth 50 points. Wow, triple exclamation marks there. It is still due on Tuesday the 8th, uh, no matter what. Uh, work must be shown for every problem. No work equals no points. So I've got about, this actually has fewer questions than I thought. Then I remembered, um, and obviously I'm going to go over more of these in notes later, but something like number two here, in a group of 300 people, the numbers who do or do not smoke and do or do not have cancer are reported in the table below. So given that a person is a smoker, what's the probability they have cancer? So this is what I'm looking for. I can give you this problem here. So ones like this, I'm going to want a probability statement just like this. So just write probability of cancer given that they're a smoker. Remember that given parts always come seconds. And that is the denominator. So that they're smoker, given that they're a smoker, how many people smoke? 85. How many of them intersect with smoking and have cancer? That is 11. And then give me the probability rounded three decimals. Mistake, take a stab at this one. This is point one three seven ish Okay, something like that. Given that a person is not a smoker, what's the probability that they have cancer? So, um, not smoker is the denominator, and that is 215 of them. And uh, those with that uh, don't smoke and have cancer are 13. All right, so find that. It's got to be, what is that, 061? Very close to this one's easy. Given randomly chosen person from the sample, what is the probability they have cancer? So overall, there's 300 people, 24 have cancer. What's the probability of picking someone with cancer? 0. 0.08. Oh, all right. Given that a person does not have cancer, what is the probability they do not smoke? So uh, again, I know it's it's written in the opposite order. So you gotta remember the given, what comes after the given is the denominator. That's what you write second. So what's the probability that they don't, you're picking someone that does not smoke given that they have no cancer. So no cancer would be 276 and those that do not uh, smoke and don't have cancer, 202 of them. E, given another person has cancer, what's the probability they smoke? So the denominator is cancer, which is 24, and those that smoke, 11. So 11 out of 24. All right. So I'm talking about there. Then, you know, we'll talk about three. It's a pretty easy one. Uh, then we'll talk about four in class, as we will with five. Let's talk about uh, 8A here. So on 8A... We've got something with independence. Let E be the event that a one comes up on the first roll. So probability of E is one out of six. Let F be the event that the sum of the two rolls is five. Okay, so we use you know, one through six, one through six, 36 sums. Four of the 36 are a sum of five. Probability of F is one ninth. So we can already find, again, you have to memorize the probability of the intersection. Does it equal the probability of the first event times the second. So we can do this one six times one ninth, that's one fifty fourth, that's the right side. So their intersection is what follows. So both E and F have to occur. So to get a sum of five, but a one is the first roll, that can only happen one time. If you wanna think about this as the first roll, getting a one and a sum of five, you only see that one time so one out of 36 is their intersection again one four means you roll one then you get a four to get a sum of five so one out of 36 does not equal one out of 54 so not independent is what you're going to write not independence all right we'll talk more about those again a signal is true we've done this one is transmitted over a noisy channel it is known that the signal will be correctly received with probability 0.85. If three copies are sent independently, uh, what is the probability at least one of them is re received? We need one of the same signals received. So X is a received signal. I want the probability that X is greater than or equal to 1, which is 1 minus the probability that X is 0. Again, it doesn't matter if 1, 2, or 3 are received. We just need one of them. So 1 minus the probability that it's not received three straight times. And whatever that is. 
Okay, I'm just gonna give you a hint. I have a calculator on me at the time. To do this, you're probably gonna want a bunch of different uh, sub samples here. Figure out how many less than high school, how many graduated high school, some college, college, smoked, smoked, and then you know how many people total are in this sample. I get all that, and that'll help you. Okay, we'll talk about with this conditional distribution. We'll talk more about how to do 11D later. All right, again, you're not supposed to have all this done, but you you can definitely do half of it over this Thanksgiving siesta. Uh, what is the probability a randomly selected woman who gave birth in 1992 was 24 years of age and younger? Oh, forgot to do what the probability that she was uh, 50 or older. So age, X is age at delivery. So probability that X is less than or equal to 24 is those three probabilities. Less than or equal to 24 is that one, that one, and that one. All right, so let's continue here. Um, so probability that is 50 or older probability x greater than or equal to 50 is 1 minus all the probabilities in the table and it might honestly round to zero but you need to show that you need to see what all the probabilities add to in the table i mean think what proportion of uh you know it might be one out of ten thousand births to someone uh 50 or more even you know one out of twenty five thousand. so it's it's essentially it's going to round to zero it might so don't be shocked if it rounds to zero but that's the second part don't forget about that given that a randomly selected woman who gave birth in 1992 was 34 a was 34 years of age and younger okay so 34 and younger so the denominator is going to be the sum of those All right, so actually, we got to be careful. It really should be the sum of those. If the probability of getting someone 50 or over is truly zero, and you'll find that out because these all add to one exactly, then you can do one minus those other three. So I, I kind of jumped the gun there. If, again, these probabilities add to one and the probability of picking someone 50 or over is essentially zero, then you can do one minus this plus this plus this to get your denominator. If that is not the case, then just add whatever probability the 50 or over is. So I'm just going to put plus the probability x is greater than or equal to 50 in case it's not zero. All right, and then do the probability that they're uh, 24 or under, which is that, that, and that. Uh, what we did in A there. All right, and divide. Okay, I'm, what I'm going to tell you about 14 is in uh, that first video I made for chapter 12 notes. Or actually, I think we did this in class. We actually did this one in class. Okay, we'll come back and we'll talk about it because I'm sure it's in the quiz review. This is another one we did in class. All right. And 16, this is another one. Ah. Uh, might have actually, 15 might be in the video, and I'm thinking 16 is in the video, or we did it in class. Anyway, not tough. Okay, so you can do one of two things. You can make a Venn diagram on this, or you can do the probability of A union B. 72.5% of all College of Science students took CAP 1 last year, 55.75% of all of them took Physics 1. 50 last year, and almost 50% of them took both. What percent of freshmen College of Science uh, students took in neither of these two classes? So I've made these into probabilities. The probability of A union B, that's the probability that, again, if you did a Venn diagram, you would just find what is inside the rectangle. So, you know, you'd have the intersection, and that's the neither part. One minus that plus that plus that. You can do that. That's fine. Here's one way to do it. So let A be the probability that they took uh, what calc? Let B be the probability that they took physics. So the probability they took at least one of the two courses is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of their intersection. So that's the probability they took at least one of the courses. So the probability they took neither of the courses is one minus whatever that answer is. And then make it into a percentage. Okay, just doing some...